viewers, let's learn about the azygal system of veins, one of the very important content of my posterior mediastinum. We are looking at the azygous vein on this model. Before going to its detail, let's have a little bit orientation. You are looking at the heart, which is placed above the diaphragm. And you are looking at the right dome of the diaphragm at the moment. Because this is the right posterior mediastinum, which is in your view. You are looking at posterior thoracic wall. You are looking at this yellow structure and these beaded appearances. This is my right thoracic sympathetic chain. You are looking at the posterior intercostal arteries, posterior intercostal veins. And then you can see this is my azygous vein and then you can see this arch of the azygous and it is connecting with my superior vena cava. And what is the vertebral level? The fourth thoracic vertebral level, T4 level is the place where my azygous vein ultimately drains into the superior vena cava. And now this is my superior vena cava and these are those pulmonary arteries and veins who are bringing and receiving blood from my lungs. Lung has been removed. Now you are looking at esophagus. You are looking at the vagus nerve here. Now when we talk about this azygous vein, its origin, course, tributaries, anastomosis and termination are highly variable. So you will find a lot of change in their appearance, location, presence of all these origin course, tributaries and anastomosis. So be ready to accept different variations. Now, first of all, let's pay attention how my azygous vein is formed. My azygous vein formed, there are various ways of its formation, but the most acceptable, it is said that it is usually formed by the union of my ascending lumbar veins when they join with the subcostal veins. That is the one on the right side, they make my azygous vein. And this azygous vein, it has its journey and then it receives the posterior intercostal veins till it reaches to my fourth intercostal space. And now here you can see here, the posterior intercostal veins of my space number 2, 3 and 4, they are making this superior intercostal vein and that opens up into this azygous vein or the arch of my azygous vein. And what happened about my first intercostal space, the vein of my first intercostal space is opening directly into my right brachiocephalic vein. Now we are looking at the left posterior mediastinum on the same model. So there we can see the heart, we can see the left dome of the diaphragm, we can see very clearly the arch of aorta and the descending thoracic aorta. And there we can see here the thymus gland and we can see this the pulmonary trunk and the vessels who are receiving and sending blood to my lungs. Lung has been removed. Now let's come to the posterior side. So the most posteriorly located structure, this yellow thing which has the beads, this is my thoracic sympathetic chain. And can you see this white structure? These are my spinal nerve which are running in each intercostal space. And you can see on top we have the posterior intercostal vein, posterior intercostal artery, and then we have an intercostal nerve. Now when we are looking up, what we can see on this side is similar looking structure, but we don't call it azygous vein. We give them a different name. In the lower segment, we are looking at the hemi azygous vein, and the upper segment, we are looking at the accessory hemi azygous vein. These hemi azygous vein and accessory hemi azygous vein, they are ultimately draining into my azygous vein and through this azygous vein, it's open ultimately into my superior vena cava at the fourth thoracic vertebral level. Now, what happens? Same like my azygous, my left ascending lumbar vein, when it joins with the 
left subcostal vein they are making, they are draining into my hemiazygous and hemiazygous it receives the posterior intercostal veins from the spaces which are located in 8th, 9th, 10th and the 11th intercostal spaces. They all are contributing their drainage into my hemiazygous vein and then above if we take above the first intercostal vein that opens like the right one directly into the brachiocephalic vein but now the pattern is different the posterior intercostal vein of my space second intercostal space third intercostal space and fourth intercostal space they are making left superior intercostal vein now this left superior intercostal vein it doesn't follow the right one it rather ascends up and it also joins my left brachiocephalic vein. On the right side, what we have seen, that was draining into azygous. But here it is draining into the left superior intercostal vein, which is receiving second, third and fourth space usually. It's going into the brachiocephalic. Fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh space, you can see that these posterior intercostal veins, they are draining into my accessory hemiazygous. Now this accessory hemiazygous, it crosses the vertebral bodies in the seventh space to open up separately into the azygous vein sometimes it's joining with the hemiazygous vein so there are various variabilities but my accessory hemiazygous opens separately in the azygous and hemiazygous opens separately into my azygous vein so ultimately the posterior intercostal veins are draining their blood into the azygous vein but there is a different organization Let's recap the first intercostal space, the posterior intercostal vein, right side and left side, they drain into brachiocephalic. Right side, second posterior intercostal vein, third posterior intercostal vein, fourth posterior intercostal vein makes superior intercostal vein. That joins the arch of my azygous. On the left side, left posterior intercostal vein of the second space, third space and fourth space, they make left superior intercostal vein and this one is going and opening directly into the brachiocephalic. It is different from my right. Then going to the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, they are draining into my accessory hemiazygous which is crossing the vertebral bodies and draining into the azygous. And the lower spaces, eleventh, 10th, 9th and 8th, they join to make this hemiazygous and this hemiazygous is thus the same like my accessory hemiazygous and it crosses the vertebral bodies to go on the right side and drains independently into my azygous vein. Now this hemiazygous and accessory azygous, accessory hemiazygous, sometimes they are connected with each other. So there are so many variabilities. The azygous vein is usually formed by the union of ascending lumbar veins. So there we are looking at the ascending lumbar veins both on the right side and left side. And these ascending lumbar veins when they are joining with these, these are what? These are my subcostal veins both on the right and left side. So what happens on the right side? On the right side we have the azygous vein. And you can see this azygous vein is running all the way in my posterior mediastinum. Ultimately, it opens up into my superior vena cava at the level of fourth thoracic vertebrae. Now, let's look at what happens throughout the journey of this posterior intercostal veins. So, now we can see this is the azygous vein. And now, what is on this left side? You are looking at this structure that is my hemi azygous vein. And this is made on the left side. And there what we can see, the first intercostal space and the veins there, which veins? The posterior intercostal veins. So these veins are opening up directly into my brachiocephalic, right-sided posterior intercostal vein opens in the right brachiocephalic, left-sided goes and opens into left brachiocephalic veins. Then what happens? The second, third and fourth space on the right side and left side they are joining and making what? Right superior intercostal vein on the right side and left superior intercostal vein on the left side. But you can see there is a difference. On the right side, they are joining the azygous system. 
the azygous vein and on the left side they are going to open up into my brachiocephalic vein of left side. Then after that from on the right side the posterior intercostal veins from spaces 5 to 11 they are opening in my azygous and on the right and on the left side the veins of my posterior intercostal veins of my 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th space they are joining to making my accessory hemiazygous and this one is opening connecting its pouring its blood into my azygous vein and then the lower spaces on the left side means space number 9, 10 and 11 their posterior intercostal veins they are opening into the hemiazygous vein. So let's look at it again on the right side the first intercostal space posterior intercostal vein opens up directly into right brachiocephalic vein. Second, third and fourth posterior intercostal veins on the right side they join and they make right superior intercostal vein and this one drains into my azygous. Then space number 5 to space number 11 posterior intercostal veins they open directly into the azygous vein. On the left side the first intercostal first posterior intercostal vein it opens directly into the left brachiocephalic then space number 2, 3 and 4 their posterior intercostal veins they join to form left superior intercostal vein and this one is also going to the brachiocephalic. On the right side it was going to the azygous but here it is going to the brachiocephalic. Then coming to the space number 5, 6, 7 and 8 posterior intercostal veins they join, they drain their venous blood into my accessory hemiazygous vein and this accessory hemiazygous it terminates its ends its journey by joining my azygous vein when it crosses the midline and it from the left side it goes to the right side. Coming to the spaces intercostal spaces on the left side which spaces 9th intercostal space 10th intercostal space and 11th intercostal space their posterior intercostal veins they are draining into hemiazygous and this hemiazygous is also connecting its blood into the azygous vein. Sometime these accessory hemiazygous and hemiazygous they are also connected with each other. So there are so many variabilities. So this is an overview of my posterior intercostal vein and how they are pouring their blood into azygous vein on the right side and how they are pouring their blood into the accessory hemiazygous and hemiazygous veins on the left side. But ultimately all the blood from the right side the posterior intercostal veins directly they enter into my azygous and indirectly they enter into my azygous vein and on the left side they are going in a patchy work some of them are draining making accessory hemiazygous, hemiazygous but ultimately all the posterior intercostal veins from space number 2 to space number 11 on the right they are opening in the azygous. On the left upper 3 spaces rather I will say upper 4 spaces it is going to the brachiocephalic. From space nine, 5 to space 11 this is going through accessory hemiazygous and hemiazygous and they are ultimately joining my azygous vein. Now let us look at in this cadaveric image there you can see very clearly this is my arch of the azygous vein and this this arching is visible where on the hilum of my right lung. If you can examine a hilum of the right lung the, the structure whose arching over immediately above to it that will be the arch which is formed by this azygous vein and then there you can see the superior intercostal vein and there you can see the whole length of this azygous and there you can see this hemian accessory hemiazygous they are draining their blood and this is down you can see this is the diaphragm and this is coming up. Let us label this image. So there we can see after this annotation I have just marked this azygous and hemiazygous veins in this given dissected image 
and let's label it. This is diaphragm. There you are looking at the azygous vein. Accessory is there, and hemiazygous is very clearly demarcated on this image. And this is you are, we can see very clearly right superior intercostal vein, which is receiving the blood from the posterior intercostal veins of space number two, three, and four, and they are making this right superior intercostal vein, and you can see very clearly it's connecting with the arch of my azygous vein.